what's up everybody back at it again here with another ls uh, square body basics this is part two in this episode we're going to go over a fueling system and coolant the previous uh, episode if you want to see that uh, uh that's square body basics one was getting the engine in the truck now we're going to go over fuel systems and coolant systems now there are hundreds of ways uh, like they say, multiple ways to skin a cat. Uh, there are many ways you can do fueling systems on these, coolant systems on these. I'm going to go over the ones that I know work, that I've done personally, and have tested uh, plenty of miles in each of these systems. And uh, maybe later on I'll do like an update video or something with a few more here and there if I do different systems. So first thing we're going to start out with is fuel because that's going to be the longest uh, in this series here. And uh, basically what I like to use is a Walro GS uh, S, you know, it's the Walro 340 pump. Uh, they're a hundred bucks on Amazon. You can get them a little cheaper on eBay sometimes. Uh, I like using a genuine Walro pump. Uh, they never seem to fail. You can get cheaper versions of these. There are uh, like, yeah, Evil Energy, yeah, 255, 300, all that stuff. You can get uh, cheaper versions of those. But I like using these on those and then you want to pick up the uh, installation kit so you get your plug in uh, you get the sock for it a gasket cushion a couple of butt connectors and all that jazz uh, that's nice just to get the connector in the sock so then yeah like I said sorry about that guys I had to pause there then we're gonna talk senders now the sending units right now are getting kind of scarce kind of hard to come by now there's a couple options. If you guys are doing a Suburban uh, Blazer, you can get the 31 Blazer uh, gallon Blazer tank from the, uh, like, what is it, 87 to 92 uh, fuel injection tank. Use their senders, get the adapters, everything. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm not gonna go over hoses a lot in this, but uh, we'll touch a little bit that towards the end of this section. But I like using all the AFI stuff that they are. They offered throttle body injection in square bodies towards the end of their run. So the senders will house the Walbro tank. Sometimes you have to modify the uh, little hole down here a bit. Gotta make it opening up for a little bit bigger for the out the bottom of the pump there. But uh, that's not hard to do. Just need some uh, kind of a grinder or uh, cut off or hacksaw. You can actually cut out with a hacksaw if you really wanted to. Tin snips might do it. Uh, but yeah, you can open that up a little bit. I like using the sender. This is a suburban sender because I mean, a lot of you guys probably want to upgrade your fuel capacity from 20 gallons, something bigger. This is actually the 40 gallon suburban tank sender. And then you can get a 40 gallon suburban tank. And there's a lot of forum posts out there how to convert to uh, add a suburban tank to your square body. And if you're using a suburban, obviously you're going to want this anyways. But I know if you guys just want to stock uh, standard or keep your stock saddle tank, you can go ahead and pick yourself up one of these. These, this unfortunately is out of stock. Like I said, guys, these are getting kind of hard to find right now. I don't really know what's going on. When we did the 80 LS square body, that sending unit was hard to come by. Uh, and I back when I did my swap, I wish I'd have bought four or five of those to have them around because they were cheap back then. They're hard to come by now. And I think there was a plant that shut down that made a lot of these for all the different manufacturers. And I think that's what. Uh, it's causing a shortage and they're kind of scrambled getting stuff together but yeah you can still pick them up every once in a while here and there but basically this you do the same thing you open up that place this plug with the uh, one that comes with the kit then you go ahead or go ahead and pick yourself up a uh, 20 gallon tank they're relatively they're actually pretty cheap they're 83 bucks for a tank not bad this has the baffle in it the other suburban tank had the baffle in it you're gonna want to run a baffle in your tank uh, a lot of people say you don't have to. You don't have to. You just want to keep good fuel in your tank because with these, if you accelerate quick uh, and your tank's low, you can starve your pump. And uh, especially, guys, if you want to run boost later on and you got a bigger pump and tank pump, uh, you can starve that uh, engine of fuel. And if you're in boost or just in an, running an engine lean, period, is hard on them, so you don't want to do that. It's highly recommended to get a, a sump tank. Uh, I know you guys uh, that uh, have short boxes and long boxes, you can get them both different. The 16 gallon tank 
you can get that here. That's the uh, guy, the baffling as well. But you guys that don't want to swap your tanks, you don't want to uh, have to change a bunch of stuff up, uh, you can do this. I have, ironically, I have this pump right here. This is the same pump that's on the screen, and I use this on my Trans Am to run the LT1 on it. Uh, I have used this to run multiple engines on the engine stand. Also, it's a cheap pump. If you're gonna do that, you're gonna want to pick up a couple fittings. This is the M12152388 fuel barb, and you're gonna want a uh, M18 by 15238 fuel barb as well. So that'll give you out, then you're gonna wanna pick yourself up some, uh, I get like the Stop Shops fuel injection hose. It's uh, six feet, three eighths for 25 bucks. That's not bad. Uh, get different sizes, you can get it from all kinds of people, but you want a uh, high pressure fuel line because if you run regular fuel line on the pressure side, you will have problems. I have got away with running standard fuel line on the return because the return doesn't have a lot of pressure built into it. Uh, that's on the older, like the, the two feed, the, the return style fuel injection on like a uh, different, like your LS truck motors and whatnot. If you're going to want to run returnless, or actually before we talk about the returnless, you're going to want to get fuel injection uh, hose clamps if you're doing this. Because uh, as you guys can see here on mine, I got the fuel injection hose clamps right there. They're uh, very important. Regular hose clamps, I've used them and I paid the price for it. I had, that's when I originally, I didn't have any fuel injection hose clamps on uh, the uh, pressure side. I blew the hose off and sprayed fuel everywhere. But yeah, get those, you're gonna want those. Now, if you're running a returnless style, you're gonna wanna get the Corvette regulator. It's about the cheapest thing you can do. Uh, obviously with this one, this one comes with AN fittings for 32 bucks. That's a good deal. You're uh, not gonna pick up a regulator and stuff like that. And these guys sell, you can buy uh, AN line kits, build your own AN lines, uh, get kind of fancy there. Uh, you can actually get uh, AN fittings to uh, hose, uh, steel line fittings with a ferrule and stuff in there. And that's what I'm using on my sender uh, right here. I cut the uh, flares off and I uh, put the AN fittings on it. And then I have AN, fitting, AN hose on my truck running all the way up to the fuel rail. Uh, so yeah, where were we at? We're back here at this, the return style. So yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Uh, I actually want to do a system with a return style or a returnless style system with saddle tanks and use two Corvette regulators, two pumps, two tanks, and just a switch with a relay to control each uh, tank and gauge and the fuel gauge. So you can uh, actually run a Y and you can have dual tanks you have to have check valves and it can be kind of a pain but you can make it work and have a returnless style dual tank setup and I'm thinking about doing that with my 83 if I get a box that has uh, fuel doors on both sides all right guys I thought I'd cut in here a little bit and show you that if you don't want to have to piece all your uh, kit together you can go to Holly they do produce tank sending unit now you can buy kind of spendy for 255 uh, liter per hour you're looking at 683 dollars and 95 cents the center alone is 403.95 uh you can get them in the 16 gallon and the 20 gallon tanks for the six foot and eight foot beds they even offer a 400 liter per hour system for even more performance uh, if you're running like a turbo or something just a really happy naturally aspirated engine or something that could need some serious fuel 400 will do it uh, but yeah, this is the easiest way to do it through uh, Holly, and uh, normally all their parts are available pretty quick. So go ahead and cut you guys back to the coolant section now. But yeah, that pretty much uh, covers all the fuel system. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, change over here to uh, the coolant system. Now, this is for truck's accessories. I'm only familiar with truck accessories on LS swaps. I haven't done any car accessories in them or anything like that. The trucks are easy to get. The truck accessories work really well with the square bodies. So that's basically what I use. Now, I'm not 100% sure on my upper radiator hose length, 
that I used in my 83. I know the truck it came out of had a 28 inch core radiator and I know the hoses are shorter for the 28 inch core versus the 34 inch core radiator if you're using the trucks. Uh, if you use a 34 inch uh, upper radiator hose or core radiator upper radiator hose it's going to be a little long. You're probably going to want to cut it down or it's going to drape over your alternator. You can use your stock radiator. There's no problem there. You can upgrade to a linen one. You can buy them off eBay. They're a dime a dozen there. But you may have to cut some out the top there. Uh, for the bottom, you can use lower. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think there's any difference between the two. And if there is, you can just cut a little off right there. But yeah, you may have to cut this down. But if you're using this this would be an excellent place to cut down in size to put your steam vent in uh, i do highly recommend it you run it there on the 80 ls swap i did i bought a three quarters to a uh, three eighths adapter fitting and uh, put it in the uh, radiator core heater core return uh, right there and it just comes off steam uh, steam vents right into the top of the radiator not a problem there for your radiator hose, easy. Grab yourself some three-quarter hose. It goes right down to your LS pump. And then use some five-eighths. goes back down to the LS pump again. Just run them down to your fender there. You can actually, they drape in about the right spot. You can use the factory little clamp. If you still got the factory clamp for your square bodies. And they look really nice. So, yeah. That's pretty much it all I got on uh, fuel and uh, coolant. Uh, cooling system. Those two are pretty easy. Uh, if you guys got questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to message me on uh, my Facebook page, Instagram, whatever. Uh, it's pretty easy. Like I said, they're just plumbing up your systems can be kind of uh, kind of scary at times. Uh, for your, we'll just touch on some transmission coolers here. I have used the stock hard lines that come from your transmissions on a couple swaps. I cut them off and then put. Uh, you can actually use just oil line, cut them off, flare them, and uh, run that to your cooler. Uh, or you can use uh, AN fittings and go out to your AN uh, fittings on your radiator. That's what I did on my 83. I did ANs coming out the transmission, two AN lines, two dash six AN lines all the way up to the radiator. That's why I did on it. I went a little overboard with that. Just wouldn't have had to do that, but I like AN lines, so they're pretty reliable. Uh, yeah, they're pretty easy on that side of things. Uh, so like I said, if I think of anything else, I might include it in another uh, part, but uh, I think I covered pretty much a good amount of stuff for the LS Square Body Basics, uh, part two for the fuel and the coolant. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.